Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel if you've been here before and hello if you're new. Over the course of my time here on YouTube, I've never hidden the fact that I deal with a chronic pain condition and because I'm open about that to a certain degree, many of you have reached out in solidarity so I know, I know I'm not alone. That's why today, instead of crocheting something as I normally would, I would like to share with you just a few tips, some of them very much learned the hard way, that help me manage crafting and creating while living with a chronic pain condition. Tip one is listen to your body. That's why I'm not crocheting today. It's been a rough couple of weeks and I am not going to risk a worse pain flare. So I've nixed, I've nixed crochet for a couple of days. It's sad, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. All right, before we get into the list properly, I mean, tip one was a proper tip, but I was sort of joking, not joking. But before we get into the rest, there are a couple of things that I want to acknowledge. Number one, I am not a medical professional in any capacity. So nothing I say here is intended as medical advice. For that, you will need to see a medical professional. Please don't take medical advice from you. YouTube. Number two, some of these tips are coming from more of a pattern designer, video creator kind of perspective. So they may still be applicable to like general crafts, but just giving you guys a heads up that this is the angle that I approached some of these tips from. Number three, I am very much limited by my own experiences and therefore some of the things that I find helpful or useful may not apply to everyone. When we talk about things like disability, chronic pain, chronic illness, those are vast, vast spectrums and I cannot even begin to hope to encompass all of that with my little selection of tips here. It's just not going to happen. However, if your own experiences have led you to develop certain tips or tricks or workarounds of your own that don't appear on this list, please absolutely feel free to put those down in the comments because they may help someone out there whose own experiences more closely resemble yours than mine. And I mean, shared knowledge is a good thing. So we can all, we can all learn from each other. Community. Now let's get to the actual list. These are going to be in no particular order and I've just got some bullet points I'm going to work through. Number one, I've just titled this Don't Skip Leg Day, but what I mean by that is if you have a routine and activity, something that you do to help you manage your, your pain or your illness, whatever that happens to look like. It may be taking medication at a specific time of day. It may be meditation. For me, that generally looks like my physiotherapy routine that I do in the evenings. If that activity is something intended to help you and you know when you do it, it does help. And when you skip it, it is detrimental try not to skip it. I know when we're dealing with chronic illness, chronic pain, what we can and can't do day to day can, can fluctuate wildly, but try not to skip those routines that genuinely help you. Number two, kind of leapfrogs off number one, and that is stretching. I stretch before, after, and even sometimes during a crochet or crafting session, or even if I'm just like editing at my computer. For me personally, I didn't find it too difficult to get in a routine of stretching, pretty much because I come from like a basketball background. I used to be a basketball player. I did it seven days a week since I was like six years old up until I was injured. And stretching was just part of the warm up, cool down routine I did. So it wasn't hard for me to develop. But I would suggest if you're someone who suffers from hand pain to try and get yourself into a routine of stretching. There are quite a number of videos out there on YouTube if you search for hand stretches for artists, hand stretches for crafters. I found some good ones by searching hand stretches for rock climbers that will teach you how to stretch properly. I want to reiterate, I am not a medical professional. I don't feel comfortable teaching people how to do these stretches, but there are resources available if you'd like to go out and learn them for yourself. And I would highly, highly recommend it. It makes a huge difference to my hands, especially the last few weeks. Here, we've been dealing with a wave of humidity. It has been thoroughly disgusting and the humidity causes pain flares for me. Just, 
I don't want to get TMI here, but there's a lot of swelling, a lot of pain, and it's difficult to like move my hands. Plus I'm in the early stages of arthritis anyway, which is, which is fun. I know in the past that I've thought to myself, you know what, I just need to do like a couple of rounds of this project. So I think I'll just skip my stretching. No, don't do that. I think it makes a tremendous difference and I can't recommend it enough. Number three is something I found really useful as someone who uses mobility aids to get around, and that is to have a dedicated space. And this could be a t little table, it could be a bag or a container, but to have a little dedicated space for your most used supply. So in my case, that would be like crochet hook yarn, stitch markers, a bit of stuffing, scissors, needle, etc. So I will keep all of those together. I will prepare before I begin a project. And I find this just saves me having to get up and down constantly looking for things because depending on the day, if I'm having a bad pain flare and a number of other factors, this is just much easier and kinder on my body. To have everything you need all in the one space and not have to worry about up, down, up, down constantly or having to bend over and rummage through a drawer looking for some obscure colour of yarn that you're pretty sure you have but you're not 100% sure where it is. I find it much easier to prepare, have all your supplies together and you can just, you can just do your thing at that point. Number four is sort of an extension of number three, and that is to organize and prepare before you begin crocheting or crafting. And I don't mean just the supplies in this instance. I'm talking about things like water, snacks, hot water bottles, ice packs, pillows, cushions, any support items you use. Prepare those beforehand so you can get yourself comfortable if, if you can find a comfortable position. And we know sometimes that can be bloody difficult in and of itself. But prepare beforehand so once you sit down to craft, you can let your body relax again as much as you can. But you can let your body relax and just enjoy your crafting without thinking, oh shit, I forgot this and have to get up and get that. Or shit, I need to grab that and then have to get up and do that. So try and organize yourself beforehand. Just make your space as comfortable as possible so you can sit and enjoy your crafting interruption free. Number five is something I find incredibly useful. I do it a lot and that is to make lists. What you make lists of is really going to depend on you, your craft, what you want to accomplish. But my lists sort of serve as reminders. When you're dealing with fatigue, brain fog, it is so hard to remember even the most basic of things. So if I'm having a bad day, I haven't slept the night before or, you know, the brain fog has settled in, it's pretty bad and I can barely string a sentence together. I will write down the things I want to accomplish with my crocheting or my crafting that day. So that could look like film the intro for this video, finish off this particular written pattern, crochet part of this particular project. I will just make a list of the things I want to get accomplished. I will slowly make my way through that list. Maybe I'll get it done, maybe I won't, but at least my objectives are written down. So if I return to the list a day, a week later, still got all the information there and hopefully that way I don't forget it. Number six is use your support items if you need to. So for example, at the moment I got my back brace on. Hang on, you can hear the Velcro, let me show you. Can you hear that? Got my back brace on, I've got my knee brace on. I'm sitting on one of my, my special disability cushions. They're marketed as disability cushions to help your hips and back. Not convinced that they do that really at this point. I've been using this for well over a year. I'm not convinced, but I use it anyway. I use my compression gloves quite a bit. And they're also one of those things I'm not 100% convinced they work. I don't know if it's a bit of the placebo effect or if they're just sort of a comfort thing, but I, don't know, I still use them just in case. They haven't been detrimental at any rate. So anything that is designed to help you or assist you, take advantage of that. Use that to make your crafting experience more comfortable, easier on your body, just better all around. Number seven is find community. Sometimes just having a person or a small group of people who truly empathize and understand what you're going through makes a huge difference. It really, really does. And finding people, whether IRL or online, who do 
understand, fully understand that experience. It's kind of cathartic and almost liberating in a way. So I would suggest if you don't have community, maybe try and find one just for a little bit of support. If you're someone who has been struggling with that, you are more than welcome to come and join the Discord. There is a link for that down in the description. We have a health channel and you are more than welcome to join us and you can chat or just straight up vent about whatever is on your mind. There are those of us in the Discord who absolutely empathize with what you're going through and we are there to offer support or just be a wailing wall you can yell at. And I know that can be hard for people. Maybe you're dealing with a bit of social anxiety. You are still welcome. You don't have to say anything if you're not comfortable doing that. But if you take a bit of reassurance just from seeing and reading other people's experiences, just come and lurk. No pressure. Number eight is time management. Now, this is one I have struggled with a lot in the past. And if I'm being completely honest, I still struggle with a little bit. Not because I want to. I just get into the zone and suddenly you look at the clock and three hours have passed and you think, oh, whoops, I only meant to crochet for an hour. But yeah, I do find it is much easier on my body when I manage my time. So I try and crochet in segments of anywhere between, I'd say, an hour and and two hours. It really depends on the day. If I'm having a bad day, I will crochet for a lesser amount of time. If I'm having a better day, I can crochet that little bit longer. And number eight segues nicely into number nine, but that is to set a timer. Now, there are a couple of rules I put in place when I set a timer, and I've had to enforce this on myself for reasons. But what I will do is I will take whatever time I plan to crochet for that day. So let's just say, for example, I'm crocheting for one hour. I will set my timer for an hour. I will choose the most obnoxious, annoying ringtone or chime, whatever's on your device as possible. Then I will place it across the room from me. So I physically have to get up go to the timer to stop the annoying noise. I put this in place for myself because I realized I was always running too long. If I set myself a goal of crocheting for an hour, I would end up crocheting for two, three, even four. And there were consequences for that. Either my hands got really sore or I was dealing with pain flares. In order to just stop myself from doing that, I came up with these rules. Obnoxious loud sound, set it on the other side of the room. Perhaps you're someone who doesn't need quite so extreme measures, but I had to enforce that on myself. And while I don't use it much anymore, if I ever find myself slipping back into those bad habits, I will absolutely reinstate the obnoxious timer. Worked like a charm. A very, very loud, annoying, obnoxious charm. And my final one today, number 10, is very similar to number five in that we are writing things down. But this one comes more from a pattern designer perspective. When I am designing a pattern, I find it incredibly useful to write everything down, absolutely everything. The pattern itself, notes, any additional information you think may prove useful later on. Because what I used to do in the past was I would use a shorthand I would convince myself I would remember what I did and it, it, ended, it ended in disaster. If you are a pattern designer as well and you deal with fatigue, you deal with brain fog, I would highly recommend writing everything down as you go. Even if you don't think you're going to need a certain bit of information, I have found that it is much more advantageous to have too much information and have to discard some of it than to not have enough and deal with the stress of having to try and recreate something that you've already made, that you've already done. And finally, as sort of a little bonus tip, I just want to touch on what I said at the start of this video in a joking, not joking sort of way, but that is to know your body's limits and to respect those. And again, this is something that's going to look different for everyone and what conditions you're dealing with, but Get to know your body, know what your soft limits are, know what your hard limits are, be aware of those and try not to cross them if you don't have to. <laughs> so that is all I have for you guys today. Like I said at the start, please share your own tips down in the comments. 
because you never know, they might help someone else out there. I apologize if this video was a bit rambling and not as structured as my usual videos. I just made a list of bullet points and decided to expand on them. I mentioned at the start that it's been a rough couple of weeks and I just did not have the spoons to sit down and write all this out. So it might have ended up like word vomit. So I apologize if that's the case, but hopefully I can edit it down into something more coherent. Before we go, however, we are going to do Today's hookup segment features a creator called Make It With Alex and she says, My name is Alex and I'm a proud Aussie graphic designer and artist. I have enjoyed dabbling in many forms of craft but I especially love to push myself to learn and grow through creativity, particularly in the areas of art and crochet. You'll find a handful of free patterns and tutorials on my YouTube channel and I'm currently working on creating new amigurumi patterns which I am excited to be releasing soon. Well, that's awesome. I always love finding new amigurumi patterns. So all of Make It With Alex's links will be down in the description. Make sure you go and check her out. Give her a follow across the social medias, especially here on YouTube. If you would like to be a part of the hookup, there is a Google form also linked down in the description. So just head on over there, fill that out and submit it and you're done. It's pretty easy. Once you've done that, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it if you think it's worth sharing. Thank you to all of my Patreons for your continued support. You guys are amazing and I will see you all next week with another video, which if everything goes to plan should actually involve crochet this time.